Hello, my name's Grant from Laithwaite's and I'm lucky enough to be here at Harrow and Hope in the Chiltern Hills just north of Marlow. And this is Henry and Kay Laithwaite's vineyard and winery. Their wines are wonderful and the estate is lovely. And I'm here today to meet with an old friend of Laithwaite's, a lady called Cindy Marie Harvey. And Cindy Marie has made excellent use of lockdown. She wrote herself a book. And in this book, she has poured all of her love of food and wine and brought it together. It's a book on English wine and recipes that she has uh, gained from her wine adventures all around the world. She's visited over three and a half thousand wine estates around the world, often matching their wines to recipes and local produce. Um, so I can think of nobody better to have written a book on English wine and food. Hi, Cindy Marie. Hi, lovely. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really good to see you. Yeah, you too. You oh, too. well, welcome. What a lovely place to be. Unbelievable. It's great. So we're overlooking Marlowe's. Just... Yeah, just over there and there. And this is the Heron Hope Vineyards. Amazing. So wonderful. So we're, we're here to talk uh, about your book. <laughs> Yay. Um, and uh, you were very creative during lockdown, weren't you? <laughs> very busy. I, I have a very low boredom threshold. So that was the reason <laughs> for the book, really. So yeah, oh. absolutely. And it's, uh, it's recipes which uh, you've collected over your travels, your adventures yeah. for 25 odd years mm -hmm. in the wine trade. Yeah. Um, and English wine. Yeah. So we're going to cook uh, one of the recipes from your book. The recipe's on page 160 and the Harrow and Hope which we're pairing your recipe with on page 158. Absolutely. So what are we what are we going to cook? What are we prepping? So it's a basically a warm grain salad, um, but it's done with a poached, well, it would be done with poached pheasant, um, but there aren't many pheasants around this time of year. So we've got some smoked chicken to go with it today. Um, and so with that, we've got pomegranates, we've got watercress, um, we've got some lovely, beautiful, bright green um, pistachios to give a bit of crunch and texture. Nice. Obviously some um, uh, parsley. Then we've got some parsnips and some sweet potatoes which have been roasted to give a little bit of added sweetness. Brilliant. So that's the plan. I think first of all let's start toasting some vulgar wheat okay, if you don't okay. mind. Right, let's see if I can get this uh, gas burner on. So you're just dry toasting it and the okay. reason you're doing that is to wait for it to warm up. So let's have a go. Yeah. So you just pour Brilliant. that in and then just stir that around. Nice, and so dry toasting. Dry toast. So do that, leave it to toast for a bit. Brilliant. The reason for doing that is it just gives that little, little, you've already got nuttiness with bulgur wheat. Yeah. Um, that just gives it an extra depth of flavour. I'm smelling nutty. Smelling nutty, okay, you can yeah. turn off now in that case, you are good to go. Brilliant. And just oh, pop yeah, them in. A bit of colour there as well. Yep, put them in there. So after you've done that, you just fill in with boiling water to cover the grains. Yes. And a very, very good helping of olive oil. The measurements are in the book. Okay, so that's in there, please. Great. Ooh. So, bulgur wheat bulgur toasted. Wheat toasted. Soaked. Soaked with water and olive oil. There's no salt or anything in it at the moment. Um, and just the longer you can leave it the better. I mean, I left it for about 20 minutes before I put it in there. Um, but you can already see it's got that lovely yeah. slight darker colour. And uh, if you're anything like me and you want to taste you go along, there's a fork over there. Next step, you've got all of this ready. Um, normally the parsnips, we would just take them straight from the oven. But since we're outside in a in beautiful a vineyard. vineyard, we're going to be adapting a little bit. So they've already been roasted off this morning. Brilliant. Um, so just a tiny little bit of olive oil in there so they don't catch. So, so my partner's from Puglia, so a tiny bit of olive oil is all of that. It's all of that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, just throw this in. I put a little bit of uh, sweet potato in as well, just simply to add a little bit of um, colour, as well as the parsnips as well. Nice. But you can Brilliant. do it with any, any root vegetables, again, that have that sweet sweetness. So there just leave those on there to warm through gradually on a low cool. heat. Brilliant, low heat, check. And you're done Brilliant. on that bit. Let's, let's open some wine. Sounds a good Marie. time to do um, it, I have to say. Yeah. So we've got um, Harrow and Hope uh, Blanc de Blanc. This is the 2017 uh, vintage. Perfect. So up here, we've got the Pinot Noir uh, vines up here and the Chardonnay's down the bottom uh, where the soils are particularly, particularly chalky. Yeah, um, so happy Chardonnay. Happy Chardonnay. Uh, and the name Harrow and Hope, where did that come from? You know this. Story. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's fairly self explanatory if anyone can see our lovely um, weights here that we've put on the tablecloth. Because um, when they prepared up here, as you can see, there are so many flints all around. The vineyard is basically that. So it was that. They were harrowing, but they were hoping. So it was hope and harrow, harrow and hope. And that's where it was because I should imagine there's quite a few harrows that were damaged doing this vineyard, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, so, yeah. I, th I think there was at least two. 
Uh, so I think that, thank you, my lovely. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, and these are starting to sort of bubble away now. Just Perfect. Shall I turn that heat down a little bit? Yeah, we can thing? turn it down a little bit. Yeah. It's just literally to warm them through. It's not okay. supposed to be cooked because they're already cooked. So just an occasional stir. All right. Yeah, there's an occasion. I do like having a sous chef. This is the way to cook, yes. I have to say. Uh, sous chef and sommelier, multi-talented. <laughs> I was a bit worried, actually. You think I might have to multitask today. No, um, it's fine. You're doing good. The two yeah. things that you love, though, it's wine and food. Yeah, so, you know, are. it's not Absolutely. that much of a hardship, is it, Grant? No, it's a joy. <laughs> it, it's a joy. So let's uh, cheers. Oh, cheers. Yeah, brilliant. Here's to Heron Hope. Here's to Heron Hope. Cheers, Henry and Kay. Yep. Thanks, Henry. That is delightful. I think that's the first mm of the day. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sure it won't be yeah. the last. So we've got 40 months on the lees. Mm -hmm. uh, the, this, this, this wine is spent. So 50% of it was fermented in, in oak. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got the old Bordelais uh, barrels. Um, so just giving a gentle sort of oak character, if you like. I mean, it's not oaky like a, no. like, like a big it's got fat structure. That is, but, uh, but yeah, structure. Yep. It gives it that sort of breadth and depth. Delightful. And it will stand up to quite a lot of rich flavours. So mm. we've got smoked chicken. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, we've got roasted veg. So mm. we've got quite some quite sort of sort of punchy. Punchy yeah. punchy flavours. Right, I feel like I should be doing mm -hmm. something. We've got some smoked chicken for me We to, have uh, got some smoked chicken slice, something. but we'll do that in a minute I think. We'll put together the salad. Okay. Um, so um, let's sling in the sling in. Delicately a put in you can go with that and that both yeah. in. Mixing yeah, for a minute, in. yeah, and then I would put in some of the pomegranates, but not all of the pomegranates. Brilliant. Then we're going to get you actually doing the dressing as well. Mm. In with the parsley a little bit. Mm -hmm. you'll a little bit of it. A little bit, you need to save some for afterwards. Okay. Um, and then I would say, um, before you put your vegetables in, I would mm -hmm. dress it now. Cool, but a few more pomegranates Yeah, you well. you you can go, you will, um, granted permission. Just love colour. <laughs> How are you on dressings freestyle? Yeah, pretty good. Okay, fine. Mm. So pretty you've good. got pendolino, single varietal olive oh, oil. Crikey, I'm gonna have a smell of this. Oh, wow. That's from a wine estate in Tuscany. Oh, wow. They make single varietals. I would wow. have had an English olive oil, but we don't have any. Yeah. Okay, keep going like an Italian. Thanks. <laughs> See. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, and then I've got this, but I've discovered this lovely new pear vinegar from Lime Regis. Right. Um, but I have also discovered my other half finished it at the weekend. Okay. So this is my go-to in the fridge, and this is what's actually in the book, um, oh. which is the best uh, sherry vinegar in the world. Wow, fantastic. Spina. Really, really good. Brilliant. I smell of this as well. And that's just great. You add it to everything. Oh, yummy. Anything oh, yummy. and everything. So not so, not so much. Not so much, but just because you've got the thing. I quite like, that's fine. So a little bit of salt, I think. A not too salt. much. Great. See, you thought you got rid of your other That's it, I was, about to, I was about to grab my wine. It's a long way away. It is so good, that wine. So yeah. lovely. And it does just show the complexity of Chardonnay in, you know, one variety. Mm. Just amazing. Mm. It is lovely, that lovely sort of toasty character. Mm -hmm. um, lots of sort of crunchy red apples in there. It is. It, do, it does taste quintessentially English. I'm reminded of my grandma's cooking. Yeah. Or baking a little bit yeah, as well. Yeah, when you go in the kitchen you can smell those roasted yeah. apples. Yeah. That kind oh, of thing. But lovely. But always a sign of a, of a good wine for me is how long uh, I spend with my nose in it as opposed to drinking it. Yeah, so I, I think could just it sort is. Of, I could just sit there happily for an afternoon. Just put a little bit on your wrist. <laughs> yeah, you're in. You'll be fine. But you are right, because otherwise if it's just a boring wine, you just tend to drink it and yeah. it's, it's uncomplicated, yeah. whereas that's, that's perfect. Yeah, it's a symphony. Okay, in with your vegetables. Great. Put those in last simply because they're warm and therefore they just Brilliant. need to not get too sort of Brilliant. into it. And a little bit of toasty colour and a yeah. little bit of crunch on those exactly. uh, as well, which is just super. And then just another stir and then we'll get you slicing your thing and then we'll plate up. Amazing. There is your Brilliant. smooching bread. This comes from um, Wheel Smokery. Um, who we recommended in the book as well because nice. they do a whole range of things. I just think that it, it's just lovely. It's very gentle. A lot of smoking things can be, um, you can just smell artificial. Right. This one is quite heavily smoked, but it tastes very natural. So no, they make a very, very good, Brilliant. good product. Okay, so last bit of the jigsaw. Just if you'd like to Great. plate it up as artistically as you can. Oh, crikey. <laughs> no, no, you know, <laughs> no panic, no pressure. Yeah, yeah, You'll be no fine. Pressure. 
but the idea is just something nice and beautiful and colourful. It's an easy thing to do midweek. Brilliant. Uh, let's pop some pomegranates on, a bit of parsley. We're going to have to get a close-up of this earlier. This is, this is the best artwork I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some parsley. Yep. There you go. <laughs> and a little bit of maybe parsley just on the chicken and then you're done. Chicken. And voila. Brilliant. That's what you've just created. Look at that. Amazing. Well done, Grump. Great. This looks amazing. Uh, I'm going to plate up. A little bit nervous about my presentation skills. I wouldn't worry. Brilliant. You've done perfectly up till now. <laughs> and I'm sure oh. there's always Photoshop. <laughs> there we go. That looks okay. beautiful. Brilliant. Couldn't have done it without you. Wonderful. Cindy Marie, thank you. There you go. There thank you go. very much. Thank you. Let's so I'm going to move your lovely to. recipe book. Handy uh, flint stones uh, yep. lying around to uh, hold the page open. You can start selling those as, you know, page stops. How did I do, Chef? That's lovely. And there's absolutely no worries with all the mm. extra pomegranates because that really mm. does lift it. Because you've got all the, the smokiness there. Yeah. And then you've got a punch of, of fresh Lovely. coming through. And with that. Mm. I dig those caramelized sort of roasted flavors, mm -hmm. a little bit of sweetness, the nuttiness from both the, uh, the roasted veg and also, of course, from the bulgur wheat. Mm -hmm. And the lovely, gentle sort of smokiness of this chicken, which is super. Yeah. And it's nice and it's very soft and gentle, mm. the chicken as well. Yeah. It's not dry like a lot of the ones mm. you get. And the nice sort of creamy toastiness of the, of the wine really sort of matches well with the smoked yeah. character from the chicken. That's a really good match. And I guess the, you know, the, the ideal pairings of the status of both are, are sort of elevated in some way, yeah. you know, and yeah. that's when you know. That you've got it absolutely yeah. spot on. One of the many things I like about the book is often, you know, you don't want to prep. You just yeah. want to grab something nice and open a nice bottle of wine. Absolutely. And, you know, cheese is amazing for that. In the book, you've made, every, with every um, producer, you've basically referenced a deli or so, somewhere you can go, get a bit of yeah. cheese, get a bit of charcuterie, you know, whatever it is, just something nice and simple yeah. that you can just open up and indulge in. Yeah, and they're all sort of, they're all things that are produced close to that winery, or at least in the same county as that winery. So there is, without wishing to sound all terroirish, there is that lovely link that you are thinking, I'm drinking and eating from the same place. So that's Marvelous. the kind of idea. So hence for Harrow and Hope, we went literally just 25 minutes down the road, Nettle Bed Creamery, um, and we've got their Bix. When it was first released, it, it swept the boards with all the awards. I mean, it's just amazing because it is a triple cream cheese. Basically, they're adding in, as well as your normal making of cheese, you're adding in double cream. So this is fairly intense. Wow. So you're thinking of Charles from, from France, you're thinking of Briot Savarin from France, yes. and yet it comes just from, you know, you could walk from the vineyard if you really wanted to. So this is, um, this is non-vintage, this is the Harrow and Hope Brut Rosé. Mm -hmm. um, the base of this wine is from the 2018 vintage, which you know, you'll know, but for everyone, was yeah. just a super, super, super vintage in terms of quality and mm, quantity. quantity. That doesn't happen very often, no, especially no, not in England. No. So you had just like really sort of dry, just all sorts of records broken across the season. Um, and it was particularly good for fruit because it was yeah. so sort of like warm. And yeah. Henry has said with, with this wine, you know, it's all about the red fruit character or the fruit character coming through from the, the red wine. So yeah. Pinot Noir 50%, Chardonnay 30% and then 20% Pinot Meunier as well. uh, is the blend here. As soon as I opened it, I got I got a really lovely sort of um, sort of waft of, uh, of of red fruit, so sort of raspberries and strawberries mm. and the like. Uh, I'm going to go more with the strawberries. There was, a, there was a quite ah. a lovely sort of floral uh, scented sweetness, you know, which I, I can sort of link to, to to a strawberry. It's such a beautiful colour, isn't it? Lovely, so delicate, brilliant. I mean, I don't think you could get any more English. No. It's cloudy, yep. overcast. Uh, we're There's in the vineyard. There's wasps. There's wasps. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got great cheese. So but it hasn't rained. It hasn't rained. <laughs> Cheers, Grant. Cheers. Thank you, my lovely. That is mm. just beautiful. Mm. And the thing is, back to the food pairings we were talking about, when you've got something so inherently rich and unctuous, like the Bix cheese, yes. 
um, you need something with some acidity to cut through it. Yes. And this works perfectly well. It's super vibrant, isn't it? Really yeah. fresh. I mean, that um, I, I mentioned strawberries Thank on you. the nose. Um, but on the palate, it's all fresh. It's all it's all raspberries. It's citrus. It's, it's red it's, currants. It's, yeah. Actually, given your sort of leanings, I would say almost pomegranate. Oh yeah. You could go down that route. Happy days. Right. Very very nice indeed. Oh well, that smells amazing. Wow. Well, it's that wonderful indulgence. If you can't be bothered to cook, you may as well have something really really nice. Mm. So just that platter, good biscuits. Nice. Mm. But just to taste the two wines side by side, you know, and shows again the diversity, what you yeah. can do with it. It doesn't just have to be sat in a hammock, yeah. although there's nothing wrong with that, mm. sat in a hammock drinking them, mm. but very good Brilliant. food wines. Well, Cindy Marie, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, it's been a hoot. Uh, this is, these are the days I love at work. <laughs> Absolutely, me too. <laughs> this is what we do it for. Yeah. Sharing good food and good wine, what's, yeah, what's nicer, brilliant. so yeah. Yeah, so Thank cheers, you. To, cheers to everybody cheers, from Arrow and Hope. And, uh, Thanks Henry, thanks Kay. Cheers, yeah. my lovies. Nice one.